This is an exercise video to practice working with Markov's and Chebyshev's inequality. So in this exercise, we are going to throw n balls independently into k bins. Each ball is equally likely to land in any bin. And what that means is that the probability that any ball j lands in bin i is 1 over k. And you may recognize this p is that we're thinking of this in terms of Bernoulli trial. So a ball landing in a bin, a success would be it landing, and that's the Bernoulli trial. So we're thinking of throwing each ball into the bin as a Bernoulli trial. So now we are going to let the total number of balls in bin i be this random variable b i. And the question that we want to answer applying Markov's and Chebyshev's inequality is what is the probability that bin i contains at least twice the expected number of balls in bin i? And we just wrote the event that the random variable b, b i is greater than or equal to twice as expected value. So that's the question we're going to look at. And in this exercise, we will also be reviewing calculating expectation and variance. So let's start with calculating the expected number of balls in bin i. And we can start this by thinking of expressing the total number of balls in bin, b i, as the sum of indicator variables. So let i j, the indicator variable i sub j, equal 1 if ball j lands in bin i. and zero otherwise. So now, we can take the expectation of bi in terms of the indicator. So the expectation of bi is equal to the expectation of the summation of the indicators for the ball. So that's j equals 1 to n of ij. Okay, so now we can apply the linearity of expectation and here we get the summation j equals 1 to n of the expectation of the indicator variable by j. So recall that the expectation of the indicator is the probability of the event happening. In this case, it is the probability that a ball lands in the bin. And we were already given that this equals 1 over k. So we're going to place this over here. The expectation of the indicator variable is 1 over k. Since it's the same for all of the indicators, we can see that the, the, the expectation is going to be n divided by k for bi. And you may have seen this in other places, that this is n times p. You have the, no the expected number of successes in n Bernoulli trials is n times p, where p is the probability of the success of the trial. Okay, so now, in order to make more progress, we need to calculate what the variance is. But I will keep the expectation for bi over here, because we will refer back to this too. So, now let's calculate the, the variance of bi. And I'll review what variance is also. So the variance of a random variable x is expectation of x minus its mean squared. And we can prove, but we will not show that now, that this is equal to the expectation of the random variable x squared minus its mean squared. We'll use this form of the variance in the rest of our calculations. So now we're concerned with the variance of bi, and we'll express this as the variance of the summation of our indicator variables. And recall that one of the assumptions of the problem was that the, the balls landing into the bins was an independent process. So in this case, the indicator variables are independent, and we will recall that when you have independent ra random variables, the variance of the sum of the random variables is the sum of the variances. So we'll apply that now. Summation of all of the variances. Okay, so now 
we need only calculate what is the variance of the indicators. Okay, so we know what the mean is for the indicator. So now we just have to figure out what is the expectation for the indicator squared. So the expectation for the indicator squared, well, if it's zero, it's not going to affect this total. And if it's one, it's just going to be one squared times the probability of the success that the ball lands in the bin. So that's just going to be one over k again. And then when we apply this form of variance, so we get the variance of the indicator is going to be the expectation of the indicator squared, which is just 1 over k, times the mean squared, which we wrote here, which is just 1 over k squared. And we can simplify this, and this will just be 1 over k times k minus 1 over k. And you may have seen this in other places, that this is just p times q for the variance of a Bernoulli trial. So then, this variance will be the same for all of the indicator variables. And so, our variance, I'll read this here, of the total number of balls in the bin is going to be n times the variance of the indicator. So it's going to be n times k minus 1 divided by k squared. So we'll keep this. Now we will actually get to the probability we we're trying to calculate. And here is where I actually just took the sum of the variances and just placed it here. So now let's get to the probability we're working on. Okay, so we want to know what is the probability that the total number of balls in bin I is at least twice the expectation, and the expectation is n divided by k. So 2 times n divided by k. So when we apply Markov's inequality, we'll take the expectation, which is n divided by k, and divide by 2 times n divided by k. And we're left with that the probability is at most 1 half. Now, let's apply Chebyshev. So in this case, we're going to take the probability that the absolute value of bin total bi minus the expectation n over k is greater than or equal to n over k. Now, when we apply Chebyshev, we'll take the variance, which is n times k minus 1, divided by k squared, and then we'll divide by n divided by k squared. There's one thing that we need to be careful about. These two events are not exactly the same. So we know that the bin total is non-negative, and we know that if the bin total is 2 n divided by k or greater, that this will be true, but we're including one extra event that is not included here. And that is, the event is that the bin total is equal to zero. And this probability is non-zero. So I want you to calculate this. What is the probability that the bin total is equal to zero? And this is greater than zero. So here we actually have inequality because we'd have to subtract that probability off less than, so this probability is less than, k minus 1 divided by n. Okay, so now here's for the exercises that I want you to consider. So I want you to consider the cases in which Chebyshev's inequality gives a much better bound than Marker's inequality, and some ways to think about this is to consider that Marker's inequality, this probability, is going to be at most one-half. However, for Chebyshev's inequality, this upper bound is a function of the number of balls and the number of bins. The next exercise that I want you to consider is what is the probability that any bin contains 
at least double the expectation. And this is a trickier exercise. And the other thing I want you to recall of why this is so tricky is that the bin totals are not independent. So we've only shown the case for one specific bin, but now we, we want you to consider the bound for when we're considering any of the bins have a greater than twice the expected number of balls in the bin. Great, thank you.